Hey investors, what's up? Chase here from the Node NBA podcast. On today's show, we have a conversation with Fuquan Bulao because this month is seconds month. That is right. May is the ent- the entire month. We're going to try to talk about second mortgages. I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but we're certainly going to try. Anyway, on this week's episode, we talk with Fuquan about all kinds of things. Seconds, firsts. We talk a little bit about actual real estate. We talk about his businesses, his systems, the fact that he meditates. Anyway, be sure to check out this week's episode right now. That's what made me fall in love with seconds, you know. And another thing that we've been doing, once we get the assets performing, then we're using an instrument, the collateral assignment instrument, to hypothecate that performing asset. First, seconds, performing, non-performing? What the f***? Note buyers, when it seems like you're in this business alone, no Chase, Robert, and the rest of their tribe are at it every week. They're bringing updates from their own note businesses as they work to find, fund, and finish deals. Follow along as they share their grassroots education with you, tuition-free. If you'd like to know more about what they do and to download the entire back catalog, check out NoteMBA.com. Now, here are your hosts, Chase Thompson and Robert Woods. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Note NBA podcast, your home for note investing on iTunes. I am Chase Thompson, normally joined by Robert Woods. However, Mr. Woods is up in the mountains of Big Bear, California. I assume there's mountains. It's called Big Bear. Anyway, he's working on a special project that we will be able to talk about in the coming months. I know, teasers. It's always fun to be able to do those. Um, Anyway, Instead of Mr. Woods, today I am joined by seconds and now jumping into first specialist, Fuquan Bulao of the NNG Note Group. I'm very excited to have him back on the show. He's one of our first repeat uh, interviews, which is going to be a lot of fun for me. Um, Anyway, we had a great time out at Paper Source. We'll be talking more about that in the coming weeks. We did launch, for those that did not see the email that went out on Monday, uh, if you didn't see the email, that means you're not on our note insider list, our note to be insider list. So be sure to head over to the website and jump into that email list. But for those that did not see it and those that were not at the event, we did launch the due diligence software we've been talking about on the show at the event. I'll be doing a live demo. Uh, and of course, it'll be recorded in case you can't catch this live or in case you're listening to this episode many, many, many months later. I'll be doing a uh, demo, kind of recording, webinar, gig to kind of explain the software and all of that kind of stuff for any and all that want to take part in it. To be able to jump on that list to get the email for when the demo goes out, head over to diligencepro.com. That is diligencepro.com. And you can jump on that list. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, get a chance to see that webinar, get a demo of the software to get an understanding of what it is we've built, why we built it, how to use it, why it matters, and all of that cool stuff. Anyway, for anybody that was out at Paper Source that stopped by the booth and said hi, thank you so much for one, joining us there, and two, for stopping by and saying hi. We had a ton of people that wanted selfies and wanted to you know, give us a hug and, and handshake and just say thank you. Um, we appreciate you guys so much, so thank you so much for stopping out and doing that. Anyway, without further ado, here is one of my really good friends in the business, Mr. Fuquan Bilal. Today, I would love to introduce and, and bring to anybody who hasn't had a chance to check out episode 19 of the Note NBA podcast, Mr. Fuquan Bulao. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the call. Yeah, absolutely, man. We, um, like I said, right before we hit record here, uh, you know, I asked if you were ready and you said you were always ready. I love the energy. I love absolutely. the enthusiasm. <laughs> You've always got it. It's fantastic. You got to stay ready. You got to stay ready. Yeah, absolutely. So we just recently got a chance to uh, to hang out with you in uh, in La- uh, Las Vegas at the Paper Source Note Symposium. I think that's what they that's the official name for the event. Um, yes, they're they're entitled to call it that. is is wonderful. Yeah. So I was going to one ask of the best you, events. One of the best events. Right off the top, um, we did kind of an intro to who you were, how you got in the business, the story about your 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 son, right? Kind of asking you and. And some other things in the last episode. So for anybody who doesn't know that kind of stuff, be sure to jump back to episode 19. But real quick as a run through, I mean, you were in real estate for a while. Uh, you had, I think it was either a friend or a family member that had a mortgage company. So you did some of that. Then the crash happened. Uh, and then you were looking for where else to go and you picked seconds, right? Isn't that correct? Absolutely. Second mortgages, seconds come first. 
Second <laughs> I, I, yeah, second coming first. We're doing first now too, though. But yeah, we'll, we chose. We'll dive. we'll dive in on that. We'll dive in on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we chose uh, seconds for just diversification strategy. But what were you saying? No, I was just going to say the reason why we're going to have you on and numerous other people this month is we are making as part of the Note MBA podcast. Uh, May, the month of seconds. We're going to make May the month oh. of seconds because <laughs> we were out at Paper Source with you and numerous other people that uh, operate in that space. And we had a bunch of different new investors come up to us, ask us about it. Uh, Robbie and I have uh, really close investor friends that uh, do both seconds and first. And it is honestly a space where neither one of us has even spent a dollar. Um, we just have not uh, gone that route yet. And so in an attempt to kind of bring some of that knowledge to the show, we wanted to make this month, the month of seconds so they can hear from you and numerous other, uh, seconds, uh, investors and things like that throughout this month. So this will, you were first up your, your, your first crack at it. So I'm pretty excited to, uh, and you guys have moved into second or moved into first and things, which again, I want to talk about, but I just want to say thank you for being our introductory person, uh, for the month of seconds. May. I'm honored. <laughs> for me being I'm honored. Yeah, so yeah. I, I we're actually Go for it. Um, we're thrilled to be able to morph into the space of first mortgages. Uh, we started in seconds because of the diversification strategy. You know, you were able to get more for the money you invested. And, you know, that taught us to learn faster. There's more due diligence that goes into seconds. So we've actually, we're prepared now to you know, go out and buy, take down large tapes of first, you know, same as we did in seconds and, you know, play that space, you know, geographic, you know, on a certain areas, we'll invest in first. Um, and we're doing some real estate also. Um, you know, I've been doing real estate since 2000 and, you know, there's plenty of opportunities local to me that we're taking advantage of. So that's why we created a new vehicle to be able to put a mixture of those different assets in there so we can you know, always keep liquidity and benefit. So, so seconds actually that where, where you said local to you, where is that at? I'm in New Jersey. New so Jersey. there's five counties in New Jersey that, you know, we do real estate investments in. Oh, okay. Some of the notes that we have that of course, when we foreclose and take the property back, it becomes a real estate play. And most of the time we'll just turn it back into a loan um, wow. to someone on the boots on the ground that wants to do, you know, fix and rent. Or we'll finance it to them and turn it back into a note. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, so instead of straight up wholesaling it, you'll you'll find you'll send it over to somebody who wants to say have a rental. You'll finance it to them, and then they will then now have a rental available to them potentially. Absolutely, hmm. absolutely. So if a local boots on the ground who wants to do the fixing and renting and everything else. Sure, sure, sure. Very cool. Uh, anyway, you were going to dive in on some seconds. Uh, I, there's a couple of questions we've had from some listeners from that past show, some questions that we got uh, while we were at the event, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then I just have a bunch of just general questions I want to ask you. So so where would you like us to go? Would you like me to just start diving in with some questions? You want to kind of explain the second space a little bit for those that aren't familiar? Yeah, I mean, go ahead and start with the questions. That's fine. Cool. All right. Wonderful. So in the first, um, uh, our first recording, the first episode that we did with you, uh, it was only a few minutes into the episode and you said something that I thought was fascinating, uh, that I thought was a really great summation of kind of what the second space is or, or can be. Uh, and that was, and we didn't even dive in on it. You just said it. it was like a passing remark you made. And then we just moved on to whatever else we wanted to talk about. Um, but you said that for you seconds kind of, felt like a high-end collection with security, which I thought was a fascinating way to kind of explain the space. Obviously, we all like talking about notes because it's a way to invest in real estate without having to actually have the real estate, um, but still having the security of the real estate. Um, so talking about a second in those terms to me made a lot of sense. That high-end that high end collection with security was just a fantastic way to kind of um, explain and uh, really give, if you're someone who's looking to get into the space and you know, if, if you're using your own capital at first, but then you start raising JV capital, or if you want to make it part of say your, like you're doing first actual real estate and seconds, if you want to make it kind of part of your business, it's just a really uh, succinct way to explain it, right? To someone that might be new to the space, someone that might be 
uh, not fully understand kind of what this opportunity is. And I just love that, um, that, that idea of it. Uh, is that still true? Do you still feel that way? Absolutely. Seconds give you an option. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. that's another thing that, that I loved about it. It gives you an option. You can get a note, you know, fifty thousand dollar balance to twelve thousand, eleven thousand, whatever. Generally, average twenty cents on the dollar, and create an opportunity where you can help someone stay in the house. Um, you know, if they want to move down that path, and if they don't, then you can provide keys to cash and you know, for a little bit of money, you know, for a $12,000 investment, you have an option to go down multiple paths of exit strategies, which is great. Right, um, And right. That's, that's what made me fall in love with seconds, you know. And another thing that we've been doing um, is once we get the assets performing, then we're using an instrument, the collateral assignment instrument, to hypothecate that performing asset. Can you... So say, for example... I was going to say, can you explain that now? Because I know what you're talking about. But someone actually came up and literally asked me, and I'm sure it was you that said something because they were like, could you uh, talk to me a little bit about a hypothecate? I mean, they were like wanting to know now. So give, give a quick rundown of what that is. Yeah. So, so I purchased that $50,000 balance for $12,000 and I was able to get the homeowner maybe to pay $400 a month. And after that is seasoned for one year, I will go out to an investor and basically, uh, do a collateral assignment, which is the investor will lend you money on that performing asset for a term, uh, whatever term you guys create and negotiate. So now I can borrow possibly, um, you know, twenty thousand and twenty five thousand dollars off this note that I paid twelve thousand dollars for, and I have performing. I can go and repeat this, the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're actually using that instrument for unaccredited investors. Uh, Because the new vehicle that we set up is for credit investors only. So we have a lot of investors come to us that are unaccredited, and we use that as a tool to be able to help them generate uh, passive income. And it's good for the note buyer also because it's a way for them to raise capital from their notes, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it's something that that banks do all the time. I mean, that's that's essentially how you go about (laughs) getting there. I mean, you know, we we have this – it's not not a joke, as it were, but it's what a lot of people say about the business, about the the industry. Everyone loves to talk about, you know, I want to be the bank, I, you know, I, you know, be the bank, be the bank. That's you know what everyone's had kind of, um, you know, beat into their heads about how this process works and how this industry works. Well, you know, if you as you spend time in the industry and start to learn new strategies, you can start to execute against things banks actually do like a hypothecation or like, you know, some of these other strategies that you can start to go like, well, now I really am a bank. I really am starting to operate in that way. And every, and that's the ultimate win-win, right? You, the person that you're borrowing against has, has security. They've got their payouts. You've, you're in a great opportunity situation. Obviously the deals that you um, might go, might go buy and get, you know, we both know that uh, being able to help anybody with a loan modification or repayment or just different things like that, uh, balance write downs. I mean, you you really are able to help a tremendous number of people, including yourself, in these different scenarios, and, and by using these different strategies. Yeah, and that was the main reason that you know I fell in love with the business also because you get to make the decision to help that homeowner. Whereas, you know, I used to you know help attorneys you know do loan mods, and basically the banks were it was just tough. So now <laughs> that we're yeah. in a position to be in that position to give the homeowner a reprieve. Or, you know, work out a situation where we can relocate them. You know, it's a great thing. And it's profitable also. So uh, that's yeah. why we love the seconds because, <laughs> you know, the yields are high too. <laughs> As I mentioned on the first call, <laughs> the seconds allow to get drunk off yields. Yes, that's the title so, of that episode, yeah. by the way. That's the title of that show, that episode, Getting Drunk Off Yields. Um, yeah. I believe there's actually a graphic of uh, some sort of bar and or cocktail scene with the phrase drunk off yields uh, on the cover of that. It has been a while. We have, we've upgraded just a little bit in the graphics we use and things. But um, yeah, so uh, as a quick uh, explanation, as I understand it, there's about four buckets of seconds is, is kind of the um, catch all uh, understanding I have of that. Uh, so you got, you know, first that's performing with equity, performing no equity, no equity, no perform- that type of thing. Um, and you could make money across all four of those buckets, correct? Absolutely. And 
We, the way I was taught was go after what you see reporting on credit as far as seeing lien status and full equity. That's the safest way. Um, right. But, you know, a lot of people are non-judicial. That's what everyone wants. So when you learn how to work all those different buckets, you know, that's when you really understand a business because there's a lot of stuff that is not on a reporting on a credit report or is, you know, if that's our bankruptcy stuff that may look bad, those assets are very valuable. You, you, every homeowner situation is different. There could be someone with full equity and current on the first you put it on credit that, you know, is on disability or something. So, you know, you have to just learn how to work all different types of assets to make it profitable for you. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of product out there also. A lot of people say, oh, it's the, the, the market has increased, so the product is a shortage in product, and I find it hard to believe. Um, <laughs> well, there's listen, plenty of product. Yeah. You know? You're in kind of a, I don't want to say you're in a better position, but you certainly have a slightly better vantage point than some people. I heard it explained a little differently um, at the event by someone who's not quite as, um, uh, uh, you know, they just don't have, have as much uh, experience as you do at this point. But what they said is, is that they were starting to see a shortage uh, in product because, uh, and they changed it because they were buying less, if that makes any sense. So there wasn't as much product that they could buy it you know, $2,000 for a second or what, you know, these types of situations. But once they started to buy in slightly larger tranches of a um, hundred to 150,000 and buying, you know, that, that pool, that strategy of buying a pool, like you always talk about, once they upped the amount they were buying in terms of uh, both quality, quantity, dollar, all of that kind of stuff, there was tons of inventory back again. Um, and so they just were basically saying that like, maybe it's, you don't have the opportunity necessarily that you had a few years ago of buying a, a three thousand dollar second, uh, uh, or I should say, a, a seventy thousand dollar second for three thousand dollars, or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, but as you increase a little bit in the quantity and or uh, quality or financial or what have you, there's tons and tons of inventory. Yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts on that. But you know that's that's true. But there's also inventory a loan level basis, but it's not people think it's not the quality assets because they can't find it reporting on credit or they don't know what's happening with the first uh it's negative equity so those are good assets as well i mean there's plenty of product it's not the creme de la creme that is out there you know where they can cherry pick non-judicial reporting on first current with equity so uh, usually that's, for that's someone who buy pools i was gonna say someone who buy bucket, pools right? is best to sell them as a pool yeah different buckets yeah the last thing I was going to say was if I buy a pool with mixed assets, because the assets that I'm seeing on the acquisitions are 25% of it is reporting on credit and, you know, maybe 18 to 20%, you know, if you, if you're lucky or, you know, some type of partial equity with full equity, mm -hmm. and then the rest is a mixture of everything else that falls within those four buckets. Yeah. So when, if, if I put out, you know, the creme de la creme, then, you know, no one is used to buying the other stuff, then I'm going to sit with that stuff and I have to work. And that's what I mentioned in the first call that that's all we used to do actually to, you know, keep liquidity. We used to sell all the assets that had the most value and we would work the stuff that people call junk and found the value and learn how to work that. And that was one <laughs> of the reasons that we created the mastermind session was to teach people how to really look at those assets, how to analyze them and find a value in those assets. So, that's what I'm saying when I say when people say it's not product on the market. They're just not used to the type of product that's out on the market. Oh, I see. So yeah. I'll mention it at the end of the show, but I'll, I'll drop it right now too. Because again, we, we dropped it last, uh, you know, in, in the previous episode as well. Um, you guys give out a tremendous amount of content, a tremendous amount of value, something that we hear, the Noted Media Podcast are quite used to. Uh, but uh, if anybody is interested in going and checking that stuff out, you can find it at NNG noteacademy.com. And uh, we'll link that up in the show notes as well. But in those different classes and, and, and recordings and calls and all that kind of stuff, is that where you guys dive in on some of that stuff on, on, on finding the diamonds in the rough on, on really turning that, that junk into treasure type scenario or, or do you, is it more global? What are you guys covering in that space? Yeah, we're covering pretty much everything. So I, it was something that 
I wanted to do it because I had a lot of people, you know, that I met over the years and they wanted to get into the business, but they still was on the fence and they said they needed something that was hand holding. So we created these sessions where we put pools together and, you know, once the investor took down the pool, we walked them, we reverse engineered it. You know, how, how do we determine the price of this? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what, what did the borrowers look like? So we go through all of that understanding how to manage the vendors you know, to make it passive for them. And it, it, we cover everything in great detail. I ordered in the collateral file. We spent was about 26 sessions and it was for three months, twice a week. I would be the accountability partner, pushing them forward to the next level. And after the third month, everything was with legal and, you know, the servicer just updated them what was happening and they knew how to manage the vendors and they understood the business versus the other way <laughs> where you have, you know, some programs that you pay first and then you got to go buy the assets. So that gave them a great push into a jump into the business, great push start because their money is on the line and they have to learn. So it was, we had a lot of success from that. We don't actually do that anymore. We had our last session on the 26th. You know, we actually just created a new vehicle of funds. So we're focusing on that right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, we're trying to figure out a way to monetize the calls, but that's the mastermind sessions. Now, we do have the um, the other Energy Node Academy group where you can actually go there and for free register and get access to all of the meetup calls that we do. Cool. So we also have a monthly meetup where we come on and we go over certain topics and that's available to the public. So all of the calls that we do there are in the archive at NNGNordAcademy.com and that's free. There's over a hundred calls. We have calls from foreclosure, bankruptcy, pretty much every, anything you want to know about the business is, is there pretty much. I had someone actually come to me at paper source and said, I've learned so much from those calls and, you know, I was able to go buy notes and get started in the business just from those calls. So oh, that, wow, that's I tremendous. Was, I stuff like that. You know, you put the free content out there and, you know, the people that really, really are interested go back there and learn everything they need to learn for free, you know, dedicate, dedication. Yeah, no, that's tremendous. I, I feel like we had, you know, it was a great time at a paper source. I feel like we had two of the few kind of booth setups where, where people got um, really excited when they, when they came up to, you know, we had listeners that came through, you had, um, I was like watching yours, you know, from across the way, you'd, uh, you'd have people come through that did exa exactly the same thing. You know, you put this stuff out there um, and people are able to actually go out and uh, take a swing, right? They can, they can go try, go do, go, go do likewise, essentially. Right. Um, and that's tremendously, uh, uh, both fulfilling, but also just, I, it's just a fantastic, you know, it's just like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. We're able to get out there and do that. We had one guy approach Robbie and myself. He walked up and he said, uh, uh, Hey guys, I just want to let you know, I hate you. And we were like, wait, what? And he goes, uh, because you guys got me into this business. I appreciate what you guys so much. You gotta, 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 you know, he did it as kind of like a little, uh, uh, kind of a, what is it, like a hook, you know, for us to pay attention to what he was saying. But uh, it was just fantastic being out there and seeing those people and, and getting those reactions. And I'm sure you guys get the same thing with over a hundred recorded calls. I mean, that's tremendous. Yeah, I, I was actually <laughs> laughing inside when you were just talking about that situation because I had one of the investors that were in the mastermind session. He walked up to me at the paper source and gave me a box of band-aids. And I was like, what is this for? He said, I just want to let you know I got my first paper cut. <laughs> so to us, in this business, a paper cut is you receive, you know, a check. You're getting a lot of checks. So, you know, that's the, that's the biggest risk in this business, the paper cuts. I have, <laughs> I have, I have never heard that. I'm officially going to have to use that now. That's, that's tremendous. I thought it was like from going through a collateral file. I love what you got going on there. So, uh, real quick, uh, some other items that some people are interested in understanding or knowing. Do you have different systems? I mean, obviously, the processes might be a little different from a second to a first. Uh, are there different systems you need to have in place? Are there uh, tools that maybe we've never talked about on the show? Because, you know, where are you guys pulling credit from? You're all, you're all pulling from like crawl. Where is it you guys are pulling that kind of stuff from? What are some resources for people that we might not have mentioned? You know, obviously, we, we've talked about servicers and insurance and all these kinds of things. 
what are some things that we might we might not have uh, let people know about that is important for a second kind of investment? Well, systems for due diligence are similar to the first. We use TLO mm -hmm. to do uh, to drill down and figure out information we need. Uh, we use credit reports also through TransUnion and those guys. So, you know, it's the same basic systems when you're doing due diligence. As far as, you know, the asset management systems, there's a lot of great software out there. Yeah. You have uh, the, note, the Note dashboard is one. Um, you know, you have some people use that folio. There's a lot of different CRMs out there that you can use. Um, some people just love using Excel, but you know, the real systems that we actually found out, you know, a couple of years of being in the business, which is most important is process mapping everything, um, down from, you know, how to start foreclosure from beginning to the end, what happens in the scenario of bankruptcy in this chapter seven, what do you do like steps? where, you know, you can outsource a lot of this stuff to VAs to make it a little bit more passive for you. Once you put those processes in place and everyone does everything the same way, you know, that's the beauty of it. And we have, we process map pretty much our entire business and set it up like they do in a franchise. Yeah. You know, right, everything sure. is it's, uh, it's like, it's, it's worth almost studying, say like a, like a five guys, the burger joint or, or, you know, obviously you've got your McDonald's or, or something like that, right? Where, uh, every single you could plug and play employees almost, but it, it you know it, it makes everything either a so much easier because like you said you can outsource it or b if your business is the size you like it right and you want to always be in x number of deals at any given time and you just love that it'll still make it easier for you. That's what we've just went through trying to get our CRM situation in order uh, was basically trying to do those process process maps. Uh, a little later than we probably should have. Uh, probably not. Uh, I don't know when you started yours, but we have certainly were. Um, uh, we had a situation where we just had so many deals going on that things started to get uh, uh, mucked up, right, in the system. So then we had to back up and go, okay, and kind of set our process map up um, to to make that work. Is it is that something that you can do in the like off the jump? I mean, how many deals do you have to be running before you can start to do that? Um, because you don't know what you don't know, I, or, or is that something maybe, maybe we should have a show on it. You know, I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on, on, it's great to have that once you've done say 20 deals, you know what to expect sort of, right? You have a general idea of the process. Um, but if you're only on your first or second deal, how do you start to do that process mapping? Do you just do it as you go? What would be your recommendation to someone who's new? Yeah, it's something you do as you go. Of course, once you get the education, you're going to get steps from that and you'll be able to process it. But just think of it as, what if you had to hand this off to someone else? You know, how do you make it simple and easy for them? You know, step by step on what gets done if this happens, if that happens. Um, but it's actually something you do as you go. If you can connect with someone that basically um, is starting a business, you do a joint venture, they may have some processes that they'll share with you also to give you a jump start. But it's definitely something you do as you go. I love that question. What would you do if you had to hand this off? That's a great like place to start that that particular genesis, right? That that particular growth process to go. What would I do if I had to drop this? I've just gotten the uh, you know we just boarded it. What would happen if I had to hand this off? What would the next process be? I love that kind of always asking yourself that question in the beginning would is definitely going to make your life a little easier and uh, probably not have to deal with some of the growing pains that we had over this past year. Many of them mitigated now, but uh, I feel like we should have had this call sooner for Quan. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, something else I had a question for you on uh, is how are you managing? Like, you guys have had kind of multiple funds, you've done different things, you've got another fund coming out. Um, you obviously you got family, you do a ton of travel, how, and this might seem kind of out of left field, but I think it'll be really helpful for a lot of people. How are you managing the balance? How, how, what are you, I mean, you, we, everyone jokes about it, but because it's, it's totally true. You show up at events, you look super just sharp, you know, crazy put together. You know what I mean? You look in dapper as all get out all the time. Um, but I mean, like, everything, yeah, everything from like, you know, the health, the family, the, the work, like how, how are you finding balance? Are there particular, aside from just effort, right? Are there apps? Are there uh, uh, journaling structures? Like, what are you doing, man? How, how are you able to kind of get that balance and, and really work that in? Well, time blocking is very important. Um, a lot of people just wake up and check the email first and let, it, let that 
predict their day and what they're going to do. I mean, most of the stuff for me gets done before uh, 10 a.m. So, mm-hmm. you know, my day starts at 4 o'clock, you know, meditation, gym, all the stuff to keep that mental equanimity that goes first. I did. And then I that. try to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. It's like brushing my teeth. I do yeah, meditation man. every day and everything. So, you know, when you have that focus and you time block, and you know, let people hijack your time, you use the proper systems and process map and you outsource, you know, it took me years to get to this level though, you know, to be yeah. able to balance everything, you know, the experience in the real estate, the experience from the notes, using those resources and, and vendors and, you know, just following up with those guys and having a good team. We have a, I have a great team, a really great team that I have. And I'm grateful for that. And the, the vendors that we, the VAs we use that we outsource to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's pretty much how that gets handled is time blocking. Time blocking and, and going back to kind of those processes and the systems and things, right? Um, yep. So for somebody that is looking to do note investing in general, obviously we talk a ton of first and we'll talk a little bit about your transition at first, but as a, as a rounding out of kind of that second idea, I've heard that there's been inventory issues. You're saying there, there isn't, you know, it might not be the creme de la creme, but you're definitely going to be able to find uh, some deals. Um, from a funding perspective, traditionally you're going to have, um, lower, uh, you know, lower caps on, on what you're, uh, expecting to spend say as a, as a loan to value or, you know, whatever terminology you're going to be using from a second to a first. Um, and that's primarily due to just it's secure, but not the most secure position. Uh, I'd imagine, um, what are going to be some big kind of hurdles or missteps someone's going to come into if they're trying to enter the space and enter it via the seconds route? Well, definitely, um, you know, as far as inventory, like I said, there's inventory out there, but not, you know, a lot of the high-end stuff that people feel comfortable with when they come into the space and learn. Yeah. Um, so they have to be willing to, it's like that, it's debt collect, it's this investing in debt. So if you pay a percentage on the dollar for any debt, whether it's first, seconds, whatever, and you understand the risk to it, you know, then, you know, you'll be okay with seconds. If let's say you bought something that was negative equity, you're going to pay less for it than when you were the most expensive asset and you get a, you spend 50,000 or a hundred thousand and you get four or five or whatever many assets, it's more of a chance to make your profit on that money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely say try to, you know, do a joint venture with someone, you know, just getting started so you can understand a little bit more. There's plenty of asset managers that can make it pass for you that work within in this industry and educate you at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, and they have access to products. Services has a- access to products. People are just not really, you know, being aggressive and going out and finding these sources. They're, they're there. There's, I met plenty of people at the event at paper source that had a portfolio they wanted to get rid of a seven loan. And I'm like, okay, show me those back because I'll buy them. <laughs> Wait, you know, what was their so, name? Quad? You know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we had to say so the there's same. plenty of people that, you know, have product and they, they get into the space. They don't like it. They're looking to liquidate. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. We had the same experience. We had people, we did our, uh, last week's episode was technically, uh, we waited to, instead of releasing Wednesday, so your show will come out on Wednesday, but um, we waited until we had our live kind of round table uh, breakout session uh, at Paper Source. So we recorded that live. We did some, some Q&A and somebody had a question regarding sourcing and it was, you know, uh, Robbie basically answered, mine would have been the same, sources are in the room. I mean, we had numerous people walk up to us that I've never met before that either had a fund or... Uh, and they, and they uh, you know, will sell one-offs if somebody wants to take a look at what they've got or they were actually sellers of you know, brokers. I mean, and non, you know, joker broker types. I mean, being out at some of these events uh, is some of the best, obviously, network you can do, not just from a capital perspective, but absolutely from a deal perspective. Absolutely. Uh, I did have a question come through on an email that I thought, it literally just came through this morning. And I did not know the answer to this, so I would love if you could chime in on this one. So basically someone asks, I'm looking for an appraisal company to provide an appraisal for me 
for a property in New London, Connecticut. Uh, the borrower is claiming low FMV and trying to wipe out my second lien we own, but we know that the property is worth much more than they want to claim. Borrower's BK attorney ordered the appraisal, but we want to get one of our own to contest this appraisal. Uh, so is this something you see often? Yeah, absolutely. The borrower will list the, as, the asset as low because they know they can strip it in a 13 yeah. or cram it down in a 7. What I would suggest um, you know, happens is the foreclosure attorney may be able to refer you to a bankruptcy attorney or they may do the same and they file a proof of claim. They also will know an appraiser in the area that they use. So they yeah. can definitely refer. I would say, you know, get an appraisal to compete against the other appraiser, the BK attorney for the bar is, is hiring and the judge, I mean, they, they make the decision in the court. Yeah. The and are, would they, would they maybe, uh, so let's say um, the, the borrower's attorney gets one that's at like a hundred and let's say this thing's worth, say, uh, 130 or 140 or something like that. You get one where the appraisal comes out, say, at that 140, 142 range. They just look at it and maybe cut down the difference, 50 50. I mean, how does that usually go? Yeah, they pretty much, the trustee makes a decision. I've seen it where we were at least, I would say, $5,000 more than what they, the bar had. And we it, it just had to prove that there's a dollar more in equity. So. Oh, you know, the see. trustee makes that decision based on what's provided from both sides. Interesting. I mean, there's no formula that says you have to be 10,000 more, 7,000 more. I mean, it could be 2,000 more and, you know, they'll do their own due diligence and they'll come up with it with the answer. With, with a different answer. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. moving towards the end of this, cause I want to be super respectful every time you guys are now moving into starting a new front, a new fund. You've got the launch party coming up. This will include first seconds, actual real estate. In fact, we were going to be recording this via computer and Skype and all of that, but now we're recording it via a phone call uh, because you were out and about actually looking at, at real estate. Is that, is that right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, I've been doing real estate since 2000. I mean, yeah. I, I came into the business doing that and, you know, I've done over 150 projects by 2009. And, you know, the market tank and trans then I transitioned over to the notes. So there's still, and I mean, I still kept doing the project here and there and building up a rental portfolio. Yeah. But when I got into seconds, you know, pretty much more of my focus was on seconds. Um, and I always did flips. I mean, you know, so this new vehicle that we created actually is it has like a hybrid flexibility. You know, as we call this a hybrid model where we have all different types of assets within it so we can always keep liquidity. You know, we do a couple of flips um, in that in that um, fund. We're able to leverage down um, and really build equity into it. So, you know, you have cash flow from rentals, you have cash flow from performers, you have cash flow from selling assets, discounted payoffs, short sales. Even on the tax strategy is great because, you know, all the income roll over to me on my K-1 and, you know, I may have some rental losses that can offset the ordinary income for the note. So this is a great vehicle. I'm pretty excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have the launch party this um Thursday coming up and it's, it's for credit investors only, but like I mentioned earlier, we still give the other credit investors an opportunity to, um, you know, earn some money by the collateral assignment piece that we mentioned yeah, earlier. Sure. That's the most fascinating. Uh, the last person that we had on talking about that was, uh, Dave Van Horn. Um, that is one of the, one of the strategies, I, I believe one of the few, but one of the strategies that they used when they were originally, um, basically growing what then became their, their note company, uh, um, PPR. They used uh, hypothecation in this, in this loan assignment, collateral assignment type scenario to then, you know, they went out and, and he, as he explained it, they went and bought uh, three deals, one of which was a home run, one was kind of like that base hit, one was a total just trash deal, right? So then they went and they got those deals working, everything was, was rock and rolling, they assigned, you know, did the collateral assignment, did the hypothecation there, went and bought, you know, four, same thing. They had one that was kind of a, a bum one and then the other ones kind of worked and they went and bought seven and then on down the line. And then that's how they ended up growing what became their company was through that, that process as, as long with, along with other things. But essentially it was 
like I said, how banks grow and how banks end up using their capital. So it only made sense to them to do the same thing. Um, what, what is the, what's the end game on that, right? Like, like what's the term usually look like on the backside of that? Like you said, you know, go and get that one reperforming at let's say four, you know, 400 bucks or 480 a month or whatever. And then you go get say a $20 note against that, that type of thing. What's the typical term on that look like? Well, that's something that you can negotiate. You know, it can be three years, five years. Some of them have an option, you know, where you can call your money in 90 days. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, yeah, yeah. Some of them have options or you could, you know, switch it to another note. It just depends on, you know, what the investor wants. Yeah, you know, for sure. What are they looking for? What yield they're looking for? What do they want? And you pretty much see if you guys can come to a mutual agreement and make it happen. But the beauty is you have those assets to be able to do that. Um, there's a lot of people who just want to be passive and you know, that's a great opportunity for them. I love that, man. That's, that's fantastic. And it's so great and timely. Again, we had some listeners come up and ask us about it at the, uh, at the event. So of course, for all of you uh, that are listening, I believe uh, one of them, uh, Michelle, that's the only name that's off the top of my head. Uh, she'll be excited to kind of hear this topic and, and be, able to, to be able to riff on it. So the transition to, to first in this, in this larger fund, I know that the dollar amount on this fund uh, can I, can I say what, how much you're raising is, I don't know. I don't want to step on your toes. Oh, absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's a, all credit is 25 million. Yeah, that is a yeah, 25 million. second. So, I mean, we had actually, this is our fourth fund. Um, you know, the first two were 3 million each, the third one was 10. Mm-hmm. So this one, 60% of, of the money would be used for real estate. So, nice. you know, there's a lot of great opportunities. We're doing high end flips. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, that is fantastic. I, I, lo- I love it. And we've actually discussed on the show uh, a couple of times already this year uh, that we've had some people um, reach out to us regarding regarding our our fund, <laughs> which isn't a which isn't a thing currently. Um, but uh, but it's something that we're currently investigating, and it really does seem like a great way um, to get uh, you know to end up like you said getting either bigger deals, bigger pools, tons of security. I mean, it just, it's, it's a great strategy to um, when you get to that size, essentially, right? Uh, and you guys have a fantastic track record, so I'm sure it'll go super well. Um, any, any kind of last parting shots? You know, uh, obviously, we picked up a ton of brand new investors because of our phenomenal marketing uh, at this paper source event. But uh, even people that have been doing this for a long time, I asked a couple of uh, really seasoned investors, I said that we'd have you on the show, and um, they had a couple of questions that have kind of interspersed here for you uh, and things like that. But I mean, really any, any helpful tips? I mean, where do you think the business is going? Anything like that? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I would definitely say, you know, again, for those people who are looking to get started, um, you know, try to really surround yourself around the people who are active in the business. You know, you have to be able to weed out the people who, um, you know, <laughs> are not actually doing it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once you surround yourself around the active players that will, will be willing to play to the next level, you'll create great success. I mean, that was one of the reasons that we put out going back to what you mentioned earlier, the Energy Note Academy, to give people the opportunity to, um, you know, learn on it at their own pace and see if this is something they really want to get involved in. And then they come out to an event like Paper Source or the different events that we be at and really get more information from those experienced people. I mean, that was one of the things that opened my eyes that when I came to the first snow convention, I was just like, wow, this is unbelievable. And I, w- I just had a desire to succeed in this business. And that's definitely something I would share with everyone. Just try to figure out, even the active people, this is definitely something that they can do passively if they connect with the right people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I understand the risk. I understand the risk. You know, this is a risky business. You can't lose your money. You know, um, there's a lot of great opportunities and there's a lot of opportunities that are out there that, you know, are not so great. But, you know, that's part of investing, getting educated first. And that's what I love about, um, you know, this show is that you guys have different experienced people come on and share their experiences. And that's alone in itself of, a great tool for someone who wants to get involved to learn from. I really like what you guys are doing. (laughs) 
Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for a little commercial on my own show. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I appreciate it. We, we, we love running into you out at these events. Uh, you're always just kind of a, a positive dude. We've ran deal strategies by you, uh, you know, different uh, fund strategies by you. You've always got an answer uh, or at the very least are able to send us somewhere to get an answer done, which I, which I really appreciate. Um, and if you're out in an event, uh, always be looking for the NNG booth if they are there. Um, uh, I love your team. Always get a chance to wrap with you guys, which is fun. Uh, and if you guys get a chance, be sure to head over to nngnoteacademy.com to, uh, to check out all the stuff that we've been talking about from an education perspective. Uh, this was almost a hundred episodes ago. I think right now we're at like 128 or, or something or 120 something. Anyway, we're in the 120s and you were at 19. So we made it almost a full hundred. By the way, those are weeks. It's been a while. We've been doing this for just a little while. So I appreciate you taking the time both times uh, to come on the show and, and, and answer some questions and, and be a part of the community. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you later. All righty, guys. That was the interview with Faquan. Thank you so much for checking it out. As I mentioned in the show, we are making May the month of seconds. So be sure to check out all of the shows this month as we will try to be bringing as much seconds talk as we can to the show. If you hear some of that construction sound in the back, please disregard. There's just a lot of construction going on in and around my office space. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's episode. As always, head over to iTunes, give us a rating, give us a review, and of course, subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. Uh, everything we talked about in the show, you can find over at NodeMBA.com in the show notes for episode 122. Uh, we made it almost a full, or we made it just past a full hundred with Faquan as he was episode 19. And as always, be sure to tell five other people you know this week about the Node NBA podcast. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye.